It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab Hello and welcome. Well, this is a different look to my setup. I've got some card here. Um, this is a um, crafting card. It's in a, it's in a book and this is toned, obviously. And I'm using some washed watercolours and some gouache. There's gouache there, which is just watercolour, basically, with uh, chalk in it and some watercolours. And today, um, I thought we would um, just paint something quickly. And I'll show you the process that I actually work from. Um, I got some water there, um, some clean water and some other pot of water there for my dirty water. I got some um, watercolour tubes there and I've got some gouache in there. So without further ado, let's start painting. So I'm just picking up my brush. I just washed it in a little bit of water like that. I've got some kitchen paper here as well, um, which I'm going to be using. And I'm just going straight into some burnt umber. And I'm just going to make a very thin, a very thin wash of burnt umber like this. So, looking at my paper, I want to want to get a circle down like this, very loosely. There you go. And I want another shape then to come round. And this is just, just finding shapes. This is better to, to do this than actual using pencil, but if you want to use pencil, you can. All I'm looking for is just a very rough outline and before you if, if you haven't guessed it already yes I'm painting a chick <laughs> I'm gonna try to paint a chick let's just say so I'm just looking for some rough shapes at the moment and I can define these shapes uh, later on as I progress with the, um, with the painting so this eye is very an important position we need to get the eyes correct first So that's a roughly, roughly, roughly where the shape is to be. There's his little wing. He's just hatched out of his uh, egg. And we painted an egg last time, so I thought it'd be what come first, the chicken or the egg? Well, we don't know. So there we go. So I'm just rinsing uh, the brush in the water. I'm going to pick up another brush. I'm not too sure what brush to use. I think I'll, I may go for this one first. Um, that's just a number 12. I'm just using some standard brushes. Again, um, I'm looking for some burnt umber. I'm going to mix that there. And don't, don't keep dipping your, your brush into water because what you're going to, what's going to end up happening then is that you're going to be picking up more water than pigment and we want this quite dark so I'm just going to tap the water and I'm going to pick up some Arisner and Crimson and I'm going to add that into there because I want a nice red I want a nice red looking brown and then we're going to bring that to the canvas This is just watercolour at the moment, there's, there's no gouache in this. All I'm doing is just blocking out the background quite loosely. This is just watercolour. Now we associate watercolour being wishy-washy, but it's not always the case. And this is why we need to pick up a lot of pigment. So I'm going to be working on darks and lights today and you can do this in acrylics if you want to it's just the same same method exactly the same method and it's exactly the same process that I'm doing so again I'm just mixing up a bit of paint to 
catch of water. I want it quite dark around the chick like this because we want the chick to pop. We want that chick to pop out of that paper. We can add a little bit more water as we come out to the outer edge. Now this paper um, is basically um, a recycled pad um, and it's used for crafting. And it's, it's quite nice. It's, uh, when I was introduced to this, um, I wasn't too sure if it would work well, but it, it, it does work well, actually. So again, um, just picking up some more burned umber, a bit of red. There we are. I picked up a bit of raw sienna then, a bit of red ochre, sorry. Just to add a little bit of flavour to my, my mix. And you can see it's quite a thick pigment it's not wishy-washy take a little bit of time when when you're working on um, paper like this I found this paper can take quite a lot of um, moisture content um, this is a, a thicker type of painting um, with pigment than, than watercolours. You associate watercolours with um, wishy-washy, very thin, wet-in-wet -wet type of techniques. Um, what I find with this, this is acts more like um, more like an acrylic um, than a watercolour. Um, the, 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 the properties of the, of the, the, the watercolour in this consistency, or viscos viscosity, um, lends itself very well to a very thin acrylic so if if you want to try this in acrylics please 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 try this try this in acrylics it's uh, it's very interesting to see the difference between the two mediums but at the end of the day paint with what you feel comfortable with and i've been painting with acrylics uh, with watercolors now for uh, nigh on a month and i find that that um i'm starting to understand the medium more now it's, it's the way it way it's manipulates way I can manipulate it um, over the paper um, I'm going to be using traditional uh, water color methods next month but um, I wanted to spend a complete month on on working um, on this so what I'm going to do now is I'm just rinsing my brush very quickly in some water you've got dirty water there so rinse your brush and then go straight into some clean water, not to contaminate pigments, but um, I do tend to contaminate my pigments a little bit. But again, I don't find that a major problem, really. I'm learning a new medium. It's, it's always good to, to try new things. So I'm just picking up some erizarin crimson, but I've got some there. This is gouache. So this is a thicker pigment. It's got chalk in it. Um, and... It, the pigment tends to be a little bit more opaque than the watercolour, so I just mixed a little bit of that in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that in into the background like that. And I'm just moistening my brush a bit just to pick up a little bit of that wishy-washy type of effect because I want a bit of red coming in. Yeah, like that. Again, just a bit of moisture on my brush. Just bringing in a bit of this red, like that. Maybe, maybe, I'm just picking up a little bit more burnt umber, just to darken around. Watercolours um, and gouache dry reasonably quick. And I'm not an expert, and I don't pretend to be an expert. All I'm trying to show you today is what I've learnt in the last four weeks of painting. Because I had a little trip with um, Jason Bowen to London, and he introduced me to... Uh, watercolors and and gouache and um, I find it um, I find it a nice a nice thing to use in fact uh, very very quick you can you can paint with this medium very very quickly and and just have fun so I'm washing my brush again now what I'm thinking of is um, looking at my 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 ducky here I, I want a quite a dark color and I want to build up light on top of that 
So what I'm thinking of doing is um, I may go into, I got some um, Naples yellow here. I'm going to mix a bit of that there and put a bit of this raw sienna with it. There we are. So I got like an orange colour. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Andyke brown. And I'm going to lighten that a touch with a little bit more of that yellow. And as my base, I think I'm going to go from that. Let's see how it goes. Let's just see how it goes. We don't know. So I'm, first of all, I'm just going to find my shapes. I want to get, I want to get the edge right com completely first. You can see the way I'm painting quite loosely. I'm picking up a bit of that burnt umber. Oh, you can hear the rain coming down today. It's um, really coming down heavy. And that's good for you, in fact, because if, if it wasn't coming down so heavy today, I would be in work. So I've actually decided to, to jump into the studio and um, do a small painting. Normally, I limit myself to about 20 minutes. Um... To do a little bit of practice still using the same pigment I haven't mixed any more yet I'm just getting this this color in and shaping things as I do so I'm just going to mix a little bit more of that up It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because it's just an undercolor. I'm just finding those shapes that I want. And it always looks a bit of an animal, <laughs> literally. It's at ugly stages. We go, we go through some a lot of paintings we go through i haven't tried traditional watercolors yet so i really don't i i, I can't comment on that myself personally but um i'm just going to wash that brush there you go leave that in the pot and, and um i'm now picking up i'm now picking up a, a small brush this is a number six brush um and i'm thinking maybe i should try and define this beak and an eye now so I'm just going in again with a bit of burned umber nothing special I don't want it too thin there we go don't want it too thin just going to get my bit of tissue paper and just take a little bit off the edge and I want to try and work out where this beak is going to be because he's, he's just hatched this little chick Very, very light. And his eye is going to be roughly, I would say, start there. And he's got, they've got nice big, blacky type looking eyes. sort out the shape in a second so what I'm going to try and do now is get a little bit of shadow worked in so what I did then I just put a bit of paint onto the paper I moistened my brush yes you can blend yes you can blend so wash the brush so it's just damp watch now and I'll just blend that out very gently not pushing too hard into the paper because what I found with the paper is that if you push too hard you're going to lift the fibers of the paper up and it's going to interfere with 
It's going to break down the surface of the paper, basically. That's that's what's that's what's going to happen there. Just merge a bit of that in there, like that. Let's get a little bit of that colour. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit darker here for a moment because we need to show a little bit of light in a second. Because we need to we need to bring his his body out just a touch there, like that. Okay, I can see what I'm doing now. Starting to come together. Starting to come together. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little bit of this vermilion. There we go. This is watercolour. I'm going to bring that cadmium yellow over. Lighten it up just a touch. This is watercolour. Cut a couple of squashes. That squash, that squash, that squash, that squash. And that squash. Um, so I've added a little bit of gouache yellow to the vermilion watercolour. Just to give me a little bit more of a, an opaque orange. I'm just going to bring in some orange around. I'm still using the same brush. I'm just looking for sections that I think they're going to be picking up a little bit of orange light. And then I just want to darken that just a touch. So I'm going to use a bit of crimson on the one side. That's good. It's not going to remain that colour, so... Just picking up a touch of water. Back into that orangey colour, a bit more yellow. Just want to brighten it just a touch. I want to go down here. But this is his front leg, so that's going to be coming in front. There we go. Still quite light. Don't forget that the watercolour is quite um, um, dull looking when it dries, especially on this type of card. Right, so we want to go into the darker colour now. I'm going to get some more crimson. I want to go a bit, a little bit darker. And you can add, you can add burnt umber if you wanted to. You can get a little bit of burnt umber into that if, uh, if you wanted just to warm it up a little bit more. There we go. And be very loose with the painting. We've got to put some base in to this area in the second. I think I'll um, I'll just leave the feet I think as they are for just now because um, I've established where they are. There you go. I'm washing that brush. I want to work I want to work concentrate around the um, facial area. Um, so what I need to do is I need to get a little bit of water. Um, I need to get some of this orange that we've made. I'm going to pick up a little bit of titanium white gouache just to lighten that colour up. You can look like a peachy type of colour. And now I'm just going to use a little bit of that and I'm just going to start to define just a touch around where I want some of these I likes to be. Mm. 
using the brush, just letting a couple of the brush marks just show through onto the paper. If you don't get that, um, then just wet your brush touch and then just practice. It's all practice. I've been doing this for a month now and like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't intend to be, don't intend to tell you I'm an expert. I'm just showing you what, what I've learned so far as far as using this technique is concerned. I'm not too happy with the eye yet. I think the eye may, may need to be a little bit smaller and a little bit rounder towards the bottom end there. There you go. Right, we get in there, we get in there. Washing the brush. So what I'm what I want to do now is um looking at my I'm looking at my painting and I'm trying to assess um, where I need some lights. I want some lights to come in this end, I think. Um, I want, obviously, this is going to be slightly darker, um, but we need to build the face up. It's looking more like a chick now. Um, I've got a little bit more work to do on this edge there. The background I'm quite happy with. I'm just letting it settle for the moment. Um, so, looking at the colours, I think I'm going to go in and using a little bit of pure vermilion now. Maybe just a touch of yellow in fact. I don't wanna well, let's just see how that looks. Yeah, I need to darken that. I need to darken that up, so what I'm gonna do is get some um I get some raw sienna. Is that raw sienna? I don't know. Was it was it raw sienna? Let me just check. I think it was red ochre. No, actually it's burnt sienna. I knew it was one of the two. So it's burnt sienna. So I'm adding a bit of burnt sienna to vermilion. I want to make a nice dark. Orange. Oh, that's a little bit of gouache I've used there. Actually, no, that's watercolour. I don't know why it's like that. Anyway, there we go. We live and learn. Here we are, the darker. These um, chicks are like a yellow, fluffy yellow uh, when they come out. A little bit of white here and there sometimes. So we've got that little bit of a, a red going on with a wing now. Sorry about that, I had a phone call come through then. That's uh, really inconvenient sometimes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue building. And all I'm going to do now is keep mixing um, different oranges and that. So I'll talk about that. And there's no more point me showing you the the palette because you've seen me mix in with that so I'm just gonna roll up my sleeves and get on to work <laughs> so right yellow we want a bit of yellow and I'm gonna get a little bit of my titanium white I'm just brightening the, the yellow up you should be able to see me doing that on the one camera um, if I move the if I move the camera the, the thing over just a touch you may be able to see most of my palette there we go all right now we're cooking with gas so i'm just gonna pull in some nice little feather marks like this just put a little bit of light just down our bill a bit of light there, bit, a bit of light in there, there we go. I'm just going to work on the head now. And his, his feathers are everywhere, he's just arched. A lovely little chick. 
There he is. I'm picking up a bit more white. This is gouache now that I'm using. I'm just gonna I'm not using a pure white, I'm just using a, a yellowy white. But you can see it's quite lovely and bright, and this is what we want. Just around the eye there, just a touch. This is catching a little bit of light. Catching a little bit of light there. A little bit of light coming down there. Lovely, lovely feathers and stuff coming in. There you go. Just pulling a few of these in like this. I'm going to have a bit more red over there. A bit of yellow to that now. It's just darkened that white off just a touch. Get some yellow. Let's get a little bit of my white just touching to that yellow because I want to make that yellow a little bit more opaque. Still got a bit of that red on my, my brush, but that's okay. A little bit more moisture because I want to do is bring in some yellow light just down the edge like that. Here comes the rain again. Yeah. Bit yellow and light in there. Now. Bit of bright yellow. Just on the nape of his neck there. Using some of that underlining colour, let that underlining colour just come through a touch. There we go. We can bring some feather like marks now. Just on the black water. And that maybe a few. There on his little tiny wing. We'll bring a bit of this colour down. Down there like that. Yeah. Back into this and this nice orange we made earlier. And I'm just make little feathery marks like this. Some more yellow. Well, I do enjoy painting like this because I'm going to most probably carry this on into an acrylic lesson. Let's we'll see if we can't make this an acrylic chick. <laughs> A wonderful colour. Get a bit of burnt umber. Just need to darken up a section here. I'm not washing my brush, I'm just mixing these colours together. I just want them to merge. And that's what I found that I can do with this. No, I'm washing my brush because I want to go back into this orange colour, still mixing some yellow to it. I'm picking up a little bit more yellow, I'm going slightly yellower now towards the outer edge. Just making them look fluffy. Use a brush, use a tip of the brush like that, just to get that fluffiness. 
I'll go back into if you're very easy if you're very quick and easy you can actually just slightly paint over the white gouache but you don't rub it because if you rub it you're going to activate it all you want to do is just stain the color it's, a, it's an acrylic tip that I've managed to bring into this technique is I found if you don't wet the brush too much what you're gonna do is you're gonna you can paint over especially the gouache you can you can go over that gouache quite nicely just picking up that lovely newborn chick look there he is <laughs> I'm washing my brush I'm thinking now maybe um, I get a bit of raw sienna and um, the um, burnt sienna and I'm gonna be, add a little bit of yellow to it just want to brighten it up a touch I'm gonna just try that into the eye a minute oh, it's not quite enough so I need to bring a little bit of white to that again I'm putting my brush to a nice shape and I'm trying to get just a little bit of life into the eye I'm just going to leave that attach. I'm going to put a bit of light just on the beak. There you go. Go back into this orange. Oh, that rain is coming down fast. It really is. It really is coming down fast out there. I'm bringing a bit of light, a bit of white back into this this mix. Sure, my paint is starting to dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back to the original brush and I want to get some of this orange. I'm just going to make a nice orange. I'm just going to place this down on the base like this a little bit of red just a get a bit of color in there like that Try a bit of light coming through Playing around with the base a little bit like that. There's a bit of that burnt and then just 
بیچاره Clean my brush off. There we are. Need a bit of um, bit of light coming in. You can blend, as I said. You can use your finger if you wanted to. But don't press too hard. That's not. That's the key. Is not to press too hard. I get a bit of a, a darker spot. Yeah, and I can play with that in just a second. There we are. Okay, back to my original brush. Now the eye. I'm um, going into some black. And I don't want my black to be um, too thin. I don't. I don't want a wishy wash. You can see the way I'm moving this brush. It's getting quite sticky now. I need a little bit of water so I can paint with it. Because what I need to do now is get a very thin line of black around the eye, and then a bit of black in. Need a little bit of moisture, not too much. Just wet, damp my brush. And then I want a bit of back into that original raw sienna type of colour just getting a bit of form to that eye like that maybe 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 we want a little bit lighter not too much just a whisper, just a whisper of an eye, and then tap it with my finger like that, just to take off those tiny little brush strokes there. Now I'm going to build up with a bit of this burnt sienna around the eye, just to give it a little bit of form. Going then straight into some white wash. It's just just slightly, slightly um, off white. And I'm just going to put a few little dips and dabs like that. I'm going to put a little bit of white. Just catching the, the nose. There. Now we got a little, little chick come in quite nicely. What I want to do now is bring in some yellow. I'm going to bring a bit of white to the, to the yellow. So what I want to do is make it very opaque. Just little tiny little 
brush marks. I'll show you closer what I'm doing. See the brush? Can you see the brush mark? Sometimes it's just nice to, to listen to the rain. I'm going to get some burned umber. <coughs> and I'm just going to put in a few little shadow marks. And then a bit of, um, bit of burnt sienna again. Lovely colour. Just put in some shadow marks. Let's just get this leg done like this. Need a bit of black. Black and burned amber. Really wash that out. Getting some orange. Just shape these, try and shape these feet now a bit. What we need to do is try and shape these feet, these claws a bit. I don't know what time it is. I don't know. Yeah, he is. He's looking quite nice, actually. I think. I think he's looking quite nice. Been a bit of colour into his. His talons, <laughs> bit of colour in them here and there now. I'm 
quite like this chick. He's a nice little chick, this one. Just a few little details here and there. Just to balance him up a touch. Could have done half a cracked egg there, I suppose, couldn't we? We could have if we wanted to. I'll leave that to you. Just, just finishing off just a touch like that. I'm going to go straight into some pure white. Give his eye just a little look like that. We should put a little worm or something there. <laughs> I quite like this little um, chick. Um, I got some of this yellow here. I think I'm just going to use a little bit of my yellow up now. I just want to brighten some areas like uh, just so there's a little bit of light catching these are lovely little chicks when they hatch I worked on a farm in my childhood and I've seen no end of little chicks just hatching and it's really exciting when you see them come out of their shells There we are. That's my attempt. After only four weeks of using gouache and watercolours of a little chick that's newly hatched. And I hope you've enjoyed that. So please like and comment and subscribe. If you haven't already done so, please click the little um, subscription button there. There's new lessons every Thursday. And until next time, thank you very much for painting along with me and my little chick in watercolours and gouache.